Okay, in this section we're going to continue looking at properties of logarithms. So this would be a great time to review what we've covered so far. The basic definition of log logarithms says every logarithmic equation can be written as an exponential e equation. The uh, domain of the log function is, is positive number 0 to infinity. That's really important. It says you can only take the logarithm of something that's greater than or equal to 0. And the easiest way to see that is by looking at the graph of the log function. The reason why the domain of the log function is 0 to infinity is because the range of the exponential function is 0 to infinity, right? Anyway, these are the properties we've looked at in section 4.2. Um, the easiest way to see these, of course, the reason why log base b of 1 is 0 is, is to translate it back to a statement about exponentials is because uh, b to the 0 equals 1, right? And so on. These rules number 4 and 5 are really stating uh, that the log base b of x and b to the x are inverse functions of each other, so their composition should give you x back, right? This rule 4 is used a lot on the homework, and rule 5 we're going to use a lot in section 4.4. Anyway, what we're going to look at here are three more rules. Actually, we're going to look at four more rules, but let's look at these three for now. This rule says, if you have a logarithm of a product of two numbers, it's equal to the sum of the logs of each. Logarithm of product turns into the log of the sum of each. Uh, this one says, if you have a logarithm of a quotient, it turns into the difference of the logs. It's the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. Rule 8, it might not seem why this is so helpful, but again, in, in section 4.4, we're going to use this a lot. Logarithm base b of a to the c power, now notice it's just a that's being raised to the c. You can bring the power down in front of the log logarithm. And what's, what's so important about this is the base of the logarithm does not have to agree with the base of the ex, exponent. Even if they're different, you can still bring down the c in front. So let, let's look at these properties in more depth. Uh, rule 6 says... If you, for example, if you have logarithm base 10 of 3 times x, you could write it as log base 10 of 3 plus log base 10 of x. But be careful, it does not say that, um, for example, log base 10 of x plus 3 uh, equals uh, log base 10 of x plus log base 10 of 3. A sum doesn't get broken apart, it's a product that turns into a sum. This is a common mistake to make, but try not to make this one. Similarly, rule 7 then would say that the logarithm base 10, for example, of 3 over x, is log base 10 of 3 minus log base 10 of x. Quotient turns into dif difference. It does not say that if you have a logarithm of a quotient, it's the log of the top divided by the log of the bottom. So be, be, again, be, be, be careful because these are really common mistakes. Uh, the last rule, rule 8, says, for example, if you have a logarithm base 10 of y cubed, you could bring down the 3 and it would be 3 times the log of y. But we do not have a rule that applies to a situation like this. If you had the logarithm base 10 of y all raised to the third power, you can't bring the 3 down. It's only if, you, if it's y to the third that you could bring it down. And also, like I said, this is coming up later, that, um, if, for example, if you had log base 10 of 2 to the x, you could bring the x down. So whenever we have exponential e equations, and we're trying to solve for the exponent, taking the log, in front of it is going to help us because we can bring the exponent down. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in section 4.4. All right. Anyway, so let's let's use those those properties here. The, the, this first one says write this expression as the sum or difference of logs. Okay. All right. So this is the log of the, of the product of three things. So what you could do is write it as the sum of each of the logs. Right. It's the log of two plus the log of x squared plus the log of uh, square root of y, which I'm going to write as y to the one half. Now what could you do to these exponents? You could bring the 2 down in front and you could bring the 1 half down in front. So this is how you write it uh, as the sum of logs. This one over here, um, the natural log of, uh, of the cube root of this ex expression. Again, I would suggest writing it as to the 1 -third power. Uh, that's a general rule I think would be helpful. You could bring the 1 -third down first, so you can write it like this. And again, this is kind of uh, subtle, but you, when you write the ln in front, there's really parentheses around this whole quotient here. Now you could apply the rule that says the quotient turns into a different difference. But notice the one third is multiplying the whole thing, so you've got to put parentheses around this. It's one third times the ln of the top minus the ln of the bottom. Notice the bottom, though, is the product of two things. This is where it gets kind of subtle. The, this one third sitting out front. When you take the ln of five times b to the fourth, it's it's the ln of the sum of each of them. But see this minus in front of here. 
that minus sign is going to distribute to each of them, so it becomes ln of 5, you, you, you get minus ln of 5, minus ln of b to the fourth. So then the last step would be to um, move down the 4 in front of the ln, and then multiply everything by 1 third. So I, I get 2 thirds ln a, minus 1 third ln 5, minus 4 thirds ln b. Yeah, some of these things you can do in different order as well. How about this one? This one says you have the log base 10 of the square root of x squared plus y squared. Again, think of it in terms of rational exponents. So then you could move down the 1 half. Now, uh, don't fall into that trap. You, there's really nothing more you can do here. This, this, is, um, this is the log of a sum, so you just got to leave it like, like that. This one, you have the, the natural log of the square root of x times the square root of y. If you write it in rational exponents, there's different ways to go here. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the uh, one, one half power to each of them. So don't you get the natural log of x to the one half times y to the one fourth? Then the product turns into a sum. And I guess if you want to go one more step, you could bring the exponents down in front. So your final answer is one half ln of x plus one fourth ln y. Let's go the other way now. Let's, let's take these uh, logarithms and try to combine them. You can't combine yet. You know that the difference is going to turn into a quotient, but before you use that rule, you're going to have to move this exponent up on top. You see, it becomes 2 to the 4th first. Now you can write this as a quotient. It's the log base 3 of 48 divided by 2 to the 4th, which is 16. And so 48 over 16, isn't that 3? So it's a log base 3 of 3, which we know is just 1. This one, um, uh, how would you simplify this one? How would you co combine all these together? Before you uh, write these as a, involving quotients, move the exponents up. You get this. And then you could write this as log of natural log of x squared over y cubed. And then when, when this one you could divide, right? You could write this as a division. And when you divide by z to the fourth, doesn't that end up on the, the denominator here? So your final answer would be the natural log of x squared over y cubed times e to the fourth. Let's do another one. Um, this one, you got uh, two log base ten of ten, two log base two of ten minus one half log base two of twenty five minus log base two of five. Let's move the exponents up. That's a good first step. And then again, similar problem. We're going to write this as a as a, a division right here. This is a hundred log base two of a hundred over twenty five to the one half is just five, right? So anyway, when, when you write this as a quotient, the 5 comes around the bottom, so I think you get 25 down there. So it's log base 2 of 100 over 25, which is log base 2 of 4, which is log base 2 of 2 squared, which is just 2, isn't it? Amazing. Now we've got time for a couple more. Um, there's one more property I want to look at, actually. This last property is called the change of base formula. And for this one, it says you can actually... Uh, change from one base to another. Think of b as the old base. You can convert from log base b of x to log base a of x. The new base, a, is usually e or 10 because the only reason why you'd want to do this for the most part is to is to get a decimal uh, approximation. So anyway, you, you, you can change the base to log base a, but you have to divide by the log of the, of the new base of the old base. So for example, if you wanted to change this to log base e to a nat natural log, Log base 2 of 5 is log base e of 5 as long as you divide by log base e of 2. You can get a decimal approximation of about 2.3. And similarly, if you wanted to, to convert log base 3 of 94 to, to, to log base e, it would be natural log of 94 divided by natural log of 3, which is about 4.1. Like I said, what, what you might want to do here, if you ever wanted to graph, like for example log base 2 of x, so, some of you don't, don't have that feature if you don't have the new uh, op operating system. So what you'd have to do is you turn on your calculator and enter y1 equals, uh, you would convert log base 2 of x to nat natural log of x divided by nat natural log of 2. So you'd hit natural log of x right here and divide by natural log of 2. And then I'd probably go zoom, I'm going to go zoom de decimal. So this this right here would be the log base 2 of x function. You can check if you hit the trace button what should um, what should uh, what should f of 2 be? If this is log base 2 of x, f of 2 should equal 1, right? And what should f of 4 be? What is log base 2 of 4? It should be um, 2, shouldn't it? 
Anyway, we gotta go. Bye-bye.